Okay, we're recording. Hello, everybody. Uh, we welcome you to uh, our movie reviews. Today, we are reviewing Morbius with Jared Leto. That's right. Yeah, the man who failed to do comic book movies, but did surprisingly well in this one. Well, we'll, we'll see about that once we get into our reviews a little bit. I've heard so many bad things about Jared Leto and his performance in this one. Yeah, like... I don't know why, but Morbius was released twice. Uh, I think it was because of Twitter. It was not sure. It was actually because the internet trolled the <clears throat> trolled Hollywood, and basically baited them into re-releasing it so that it flopped even harder. That's really funny. It's it's dude. It, it's <laughs> as funny as when they bullied the people who made the Sonic the Hedgehog movie to redesign the whole character. <laughs> internet, you are powerful. Use but, it wisely. But now, see, there's also the conspiracy theory of, did they make it bad on purpose just for marketing? Because if they did, they're geniuses. Yeah, you know? but I feel like that would be kind of a stretch. I mean, I don't know. The new Chip and Dale movie, uh, the Chip and Dale like, rescue squad or where those, those chipmunks are, they brought back Ugly Sonic in that. So, so it could have been that that movie... Ew. Yeah, no, and he his um, teeth are gross. That's gross. Uh, fucking... I don't remember where I was going with my thoughts. Uh, Morbius. I was going to say, yeah, the internet hated this movie. Everyone said it was trash. But if I've learned anything from Green Lantern, that doesn't mean anything. I was going to say, this gave very like Green Lantern vibes, honestly. Yeah, I was like, everyone hates this movie, loves to hate on the movie. Is it actually that bad? Uh do you want to start, or should I start yeah, with our non-spoiler? Uh, I'll, I'll start with the non-spoiler uh, part, because I'm one of the few people in the universe that genuinely enjoys the Sony Spider-Verse cinematic universe that they have going on right now. I do as well. Yeah, like with Venom, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and all those movies. I'm very excited to see what they do, because they also said that, you know, with, uh, I believe it was No Way Home, the new Spider-Man, they said that all those are essentially canon. Is that... Oh, yeah, No Way Home. Um, yeah, that's the one with the say, Doctor Strange, the one that you dressed up as for Halloween. Yes. Uh, I was confused for a second because the internet is doing this, like, fake trailer thing for movies so often now that it pisses me Let's, off. They're like, yeah, that's that's just going to be Because there's something like uh, Spider-Man No Home or something, like, doesn't... Can't go home. <laughs> He's, like, homeless. It's like, it's like Tobey Maguire and uh, fucking... Uh, Tom Holland and like Tobey Maguire is homeless or something. So yeah, that's why I was confused. True. Uh, but go ahead with your review, sir. So um, with all that being said, uh, this movie had me excited for what's yet to come because so far we have uh, Venom, Venom Let There Be Carnage, now currently Morbius, and we're gonna be seeing a Craven the Hunter movie next year, uh, El Muerto, which is a wrestling inspired character, and then Madam Web. And it's going to form a very interesting, hopefully sinister six for this uh, for this franchise. Like and we'll get into that in the spoiler portion because there's a little bit I would like to talk about in that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so initial thoughts. Uh, very, very interesting story. The pacing was a little bit off as are most modern movies I noticed as of lately. Um didn't beat around the bush, got right to the point with the violence. Uh, if I could compare it to a movie mm -hmm. that it reminded me of, I would say it was like the new Black Adam with how yeah. it just jumped straight into the point that Black Adam is no one to mess with. Same thing with Dr. Morbius. Um, and Agreed. Agreed. To be honest, this is the very first comic book related movie I have no idea about. Um Hey, now you know what it's like to be me. Yeah, it, it felt very interesting because I actually always confuse Morbius for Morlin, I think his name is. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, the <laughs> MC Marvel just has like a bunch of vampire villains, and Morlin's the one I like from the Spider Verse comics. Morbius is the one I know Jack about. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know vampires existed in the Marvel universe. So. Doctor Strange usually right. has to deal with them, and then uh, this follows up with Spider-Man. See, that's the thing, right? Most of the Doctor Strange I'm familiar with, it's not vampires. It's all, like, 
other dimensional beings, uh, like different kinds of demons that weigh down on people. Because that was the whole big thing at the end of the Doctor Strange uh, Multiverse of Madness where he gets his third eye. Because his third eye is supposed to be a big thing where he can see all the other creatures that exist in our realm that no one else can see. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, what's that anime? Like Mob Psycho kind of? Yes, Mob Psycho 100. Yeah, pretty much like that. He can see everything that everyone else can. Yeah, and with that being said about Doctor Strange, uh, I feel like we can add that to Morbius as well as a character. Because they portrayed him as an anti-hero again. Like another one of these, like, oh, they're traditionally antagonists to the character. But he had very anti-hero energy as the whole yeah. reason that he became what he became was because he's trying to better himself, his friend in the world. Um, yeah. And I would say that besides the pacing, besides the action and everything like that, the CGI was very well done. Um, the roster for the cast was very stacked. And I would say that they kind of fell short on just the overall story. But this is my this is where I have a gripe with some Marvel movies overall. If a movie itself is eh, does the after or mid credit scene make up for the rest of the movie being meh? Or does it add on no. to it? You know what I mean? So Yeah, you can't say a two hour movie, whatever, with shit. But it's actually good because five seconds was amazing because it leads to something I'm really excited for. Yeah, so I, w- I would say that the actual main story and the movie itself, with everything I gathered from it without spoiling anything, a five out of ten. It was just okay. Huh. Fair enough. Um, oh, hang on. <clears throat> I'm dying a little bit. All right, oh. we'll, we'll... Oh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> we'll, we will, no, he's dying. Me of, like... It, it reminded me of this morning. Uh, I picked up my sister because she just came back from her trip. And when we were having breakfast, uh, <laughs> she, she, like, leaned over to her boyfriend's ear to, like, whisper a secret. And then just, like, let out the loud, loudest burp. Just, like, fucking blew that shit into his face. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying that was... the movie gave the same feeling as getting burped in the face? No, that's how I felt right now. I was just kind of like, oh, shit. <laughs> Everything came up for a second. Uh, anyway, the movie, I liked it. Uh, I also have no previous knowledge about Morbius or anything. Um, like here you're saying, CGI was great. I loved this style of effects where things like whoosh across the screen the like trail they leave as they move around real fast it it just from the very beginning uh whenever it happens uh it was great it every time got me excited for action um it it had a good chore- choreography and the fights the choreography yeah, yeah like the choreography good. for the fights was very well done yeah but I'm not even talking about that, just oh. the effect that was used. I don't know. Something about it really made the movie feel like its own. Because there's always superheroes who are shooting lightning or, you know, flying around. They have fire or they dodge and shit. It, it made it stand out is what I'm trying to say. Okay. It made it stand out. I really liked the effects that they used. Um I think the story, like who the villain is going to be and everything, I figured out what was going to happen like five, ten minutes into the movie. I'm like, oh, okay, here's what's going to happen, this and this and this. So highly, highly predictable plot. Um, Which is to say, if something is predictable, it's not necessarily bad. It can still be carried by good action, good characters, um, which... I felt like I enjoyed most of both of those things. Uh, I never had any gripe about the action. There were maybe some moments where characters were like, eh, but most of the time I liked them. Um, Overall, with like a few cringe moments in there, I would say my initial review was like "Mm, seven. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a good time watching this movie. The love interest was really weird, in my opinion. It just it just felt unnecessary and offbeat. Um, okay, so we'll we'll talk more 
specifics now from henceforth. All right, so you've been warned. Yes. Uh, what do you mean? Um, that the the one uh, assistant scientist that Professor Morbius is talking to, like, uh huh, how how she's basically a love interest for him. Right. It felt like it didn't need to be there. Um, it was there. It it was it felt obvious why she was there. Right. It's it was gonna be a plot device at some point. Because. It, this had the tones from the beginning of this is going to be your average superhero story where there's going to be a bad guy, uh, your hero's going to know the bad guy, there's a love interest that he's going to have to save at some point, and that's going to make him confront the bad guy, and something might happen to her, which will ha- make him have growth or whatever. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm just tired of that formula. It's just... Yeah, but... Eh. I feel like... In this case, it's that's that's how all movies are. A lot of them have that same formula, and like this movie, it has a. Even though it's New York again or whatever, it it feels like a different enough setting, uh, especially with. His lab was really cool, and the use of oh okay, he's like a doctor instead of, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they're always some kind of weird scientist or something. They did a good job of having a different feel to the whole thing. I'm, pre- uh, I'm pretty sure he is actually it's... a crazy like doctor scientist in the comics. I'm pretty sure. I have no idea. I, I don't either, but I I'm, I'm, want to say that they got that accurate. I'm not sure. Hmm. But yeah, I just I think it is different enough in its setting, in its action, in its effects. And that's what's important when you're going to tell, essentially, a story that's been retold millions of times. Because, you know, you look at any generic action movie, whatever, it's always someone has to go save the girl because bad guy has captured her. Yeah, true. But you could tell that a million different ways, and it's still entertaining. Uh, But yeah, I, I get you not liking the love interest because again it's the formula uh what else did you have that's like a strike against this um transitions weren't that creative i mean that's just a video editing standpoint um it wasn't as bad as like mortal Kombat, where there was just like eight million uh unnecessary cuts just cuts yeah Yeah. it wasn't that bad but i will say that it they i feel like they could have been more creative in some of the transitions that they would have done from different scenes playing out um and if i'm gonna give this the same thing that i will give about uh venom let there be carnage and the original Mm -hmm. venom they're making these movies for a younger audience but the character they're portraying needs to be more violent so because of the age restriction of the actual movie they're holding themselves back so much potential like for example because this is a part of the same technical universe venom there's a scene where Venom himself was supposed to just chomp a dude's head off. And right. they just don't show that part, you know. They just, like, imply it heavily. You hear bone crunching off the side of the screen and a guy just reacting. Yes, that's brutal, but they don't show the body there. They don't show anything. The original script was supposed to have something where it's like, you know, you see the guy, he's his leg is there or something like that, you know. Like, Venom ate a lot more of the person. With Morbius, it kind of felt the same way where because he is a vampire that feeds off the flesh of human beings and everything, it didn't feel as, like, he was that much of a monster or threat as he should have been portrayed as, personally. Um, I don't know. I, I well, feel like it's just a very specific gripe that I have about the current Sony-verse, that they're making edgy characters with corpse and quirks and all these, and quips, but they're not, they're restraining themselves from making a movie great, you know? I can understand that. Uh, I can't, at the same time, fully speak for it because I haven't seen the Venom movies. But in the case of Morbius, he didn't kill anyone else except for when he first turns. Correct. It's only those Merc guys. Uh, So if anything, they should have maybe showed that, yes, for when uh, his best friend kills the nurse. But at the same time, they don't because it wasn't him. But at the same time, it's so obvious and predictable that we know it 
you know, wasn't him and they were trying to not show it so there'd be more of a surprise, like, oh, the best friend did it. But, you know, I think it would have been better off if you're going to show that brutality. It should have been shown with uh, the friend. Uh, what was his name? Do you remember? Uh, yes, uh, it was um, Milo. Milo, yes. If, if anything, Milo should have shown the brutality more. Uh, I mean, I f- feel like it felt brutal enough uh, when Morbius is taking on the Mercs. Because, like, you see them being dragged away. Dude, one dude's, like, pulled upside down. That was and, pretty cool. And, like, he came down and you saw that he was just straight up dead. He had bite marks on his neck. It was... It, it was... I felt like it was violent enough. It went far enough for me. It, uh, well, yes and no, because they, get, they had a point where, like, Morbius was craving... Remember how earlier he was craving that blood and that hunger? And he was just like, I right. need more. And then after a while, like, in the second half of the movie, they just threw that whole plot line out the window. And it didn't seem like he really needed to feed anymore. It's just like, oh, yes, those mercs, those so. mercs give me a nice buffet. I should be good for the rest of this two-hour movie. I... I thought I felt like they did a good job, um, him struggling with it with the rest of the movie, because he had his watch thing right. Yeah. And his watch was like, it told him every six hours or whatever, right? He could su- survive off of the fake shit, and he had it with him at all times. So he was just kind of like, all right, I'm fine. But they touched it again when he was with his love interest. She like cut her finger or something, and he was like, can you please cover that up? Because she was like, what, are you going to bite me or something? <laughs> and he was like... <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words like, by a woman bitten by a vampire. Yeah, he was like, uh, you should really do something with that. And, you know, when she dies, he drinks her blood. So it's not like he got over that. Yeah. You know? So I felt like that was carried through the story. Um, I wish... For your, I I think the brutality really should have been shown more with Milo. That's that's a main thing because, yeah, you you showed the main part of this rated movie to get up to the point where Morbius it seems like a monster. But we never see Milo go through this. We we Milo just acts as big baddie number one for Morbius, and yeah, I agree. It, it's yeah, because the idea of the movie is that Milo is the monster, Morbius got turned into this thing but he doesn't want to be still himself yeah and that he can control it is it what the whole movie is about he's like oh yeah i got this it's fine milo is just kind of like i don't care um and there was only maybe one good scene of violence with him when he murders the cop but yeah other than that other than that he was just kind of like doofy um and I could see it coming back around where, like, the one scene where he's in his own dressing room dancing to himself. <laughs> yes. I'm like, this is Tobey <laughs> Maguire level, like, Bully Maguire. Which was great, moves. dude. Because that's what I was thinking. Like, I hate this. This is making me cringe. But I know later on I'll appreciate it being so stupid that it's funny. Same thing as Spider-Man um, 3. Just like you said, the Bully Maguire scene has a great exactly. parallel to Milo and all the other characters just being somewhat goofy in certain scenes, and it's like, yes, this is exactly what I need from Sony. Thank you, Sony. Yeah, and they they know what the people are looking for in their movies, but at the same time, they don't deliver on all of it. Because it's like... I, I don't understand the bar scene is something that irritated me. It's like, he's clearly okay with just being a monster so why didn't he like stab that guy's throat in the middle of everybody like yeah he just was kind of like all right whatever walks out and then kills them i was i don't get it because he was already wanted at that point too so i don't understand why he didn't just you know unleash like his character has been that that was a weak moment for me agreed um I will say though, besides despite all like the negative things, this movie was really fun to watch. Um, oh, absolutely! Because for me, the idea of the blood disease that he has meets like the vampire bat fusion was a very interesting concept and idea for vampires overall. Like, how yeah. else do you introduce vampires into a world without vampires? Vampire bats, you know. 
Um, yeah, and it's it's like he has a disease where he needed human blood to begin with, anyways. Yeah, he, and now it's like that deficiency this, is definitely. Um, yeah, and now the deficiency him. changes where it's like, oh, you could just drink it, and that's the same thing as putting it into your bloodstream. Right, and um, that's another thing too. I really enjoyed about this as well was the the cast that they chose. Um, despite people like shitting on Jared Leto, like yeah, I get it. He sucked in the Justice League. He sucked as uh Joker as in Joker. Suicide Squad. We're never letting him live that down. That was so. But bad. dude, he was in Blade Runner. He was in um American Psycho. He was in Fight Club. He urban legend he's in so many no i'm not gonna say he's bad, yeah though. yeah he, i he, i enjoyed him in this he role. did great i i felt like this is the character he should have played joker was not it yeah this was really good i could actually understand and feel for his depression and the shit that he's going through and he portrayed yeah. it so well and w- mm-hmm. with them having matt smith the guy who plays doctor who Daemon Targaryen in the current House of Dragon series. This roster was so perfectly set up for Jared Leto in the darkest form that I've ever seen him in. That's actually like a rough personality versus like basically one of the most badass Doctor Who's in my opinion. Just going to town at each other. Yeah, I've never watched Doctor Who. It's it's a good series. Um, I'm actually on Matt Smith's uh, Doctor Who right now, and it's very good. I've had this conversation before with several people where I'm like, out of all of the nerd culture shit, Doctor Who is the one thing I still haven't touched. And I don't know if I want to break that seal. I got bullied into watching <laughs> it, but that's a, that's a story for another day. <laughs> uh, well, it's a story for the podcast in about a few minutes. Probably. Anyway. Um... <laughs> But yeah, dude, like, there's no way that they could have messed up this movie, um, besides the little gripes that we just had here and there and everything. It was an awesome thriller movie. It didn't, yeah. it didn't, like, go through BS build up like in most modern Marvel movies. Um, mm-hmm. it had a vibe similar to Multiverse of Madness to me. Yeah, but, like, there was a lot that pissed me off about Multiverse of Madness, and we could have a whole discussion about why I'm so on the fence about that movie um i liked for it for starters because it just went straight into the point but yeah go ahead but it's it's a doctor strange movie that's not about doctor strange um is pretty much the whole movie anyway that's that's a problem but uh morbius is what we're talking about yes <laughs> um um I was going to say is the, uh, the the movie itself is very good because in the timeline it takes place right after Venom Let There Be Carnage. Um, and it's Oh. Yeah. It takes place literally like right after the Let There Be Carnage and everything happens. And it takes place also after uh, Spider-Man No Way Home as well. Yeah. That, that I recognize by like the end credits, of course. Yes. Um, but yeah. I loved every fight action scene was great and i couldn't praise this effect enough of like the smoke and the way he moved around it's just i wanted him to do nothing but like fight and and that's probably why you wanted to see more of him so aggressive is because this was done so well where it's like every time he's fighting and beating the shit out of somebody you're like yes give me more of this. that's exactly why because jared leto killed it the choreography he did. killed it Stun double killed it. They all did so well in this movie, and I'm like, I want more, please give me more of this. And then exactly. they don't, and I'm like, why? Yeah, more Morbius just tearing apart everybody. You guys really are Which... either making a sequel to this shit, or you want me to watch the other ones to see if he's in any after credit scenes. You better. Yeah. Which really speaks length about how good, you know, action scenes can carry a movie. Because the uh, the story was meh. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like the new COD if you've played it or not. Yes, I have. The story is a solid meh. It's the most unpredictable turd you've ever seen, uh, with like some of the lowest stakes in COD history. But it's got everyone's like A tier list cast of characters, and they're very compelling characters with fun action scenes. So it makes it feel better 
even though the story is kind of like uh, you could uh, have you could have yeah that's a really good point because you could have a character as compelling as morbius and milo just watch paint dry and yeah it'll get to the point where you're like there's so much tension in this room is the paint really drying or is it just not drying because of the heat that they're dropping in this room alone from their just <laughs> anger and aggression towards each other yeah and honestly, I remember having, like, some other gripes with this movie, but I don't remember what they are, because they were so small, where I was like, eh, maybe I'll talk about them, but I've already forgot about them, because I was like, eh, it doesn't really matter. My enjoyment of this movie was really high up there. Same. I was just having a good time watching this movie the whole time. Oh, um, I just noticed you didn't give your you didn't give your score pre spoiler by the way. I did. You weren't paying attention. I might have been zoning out. What was it again? Just to gauge with it was seven. Seven, and mine was five. Heard that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I, I just had like a a Labrador retriever moment, like, did we discuss this? <laughs> um Yeah, no, you're good. But yeah, I felt like everything about Morbius character was very compelling. I liked all the angles they explored. Uh, his backstory didn't go on for too long. I like how, even though he's accomplished so many things, he's just depressed because he has this life-ending disease. Yeah. And, like, they award him a Nobel Peace Prize or whatever it was, and he's like, who cares? I still haven't solved the problem. And I'm just kind of like, I... You like this guy so much already, when he goes and kills these mercenaries on the boat, you're kind of like... You feel exactly the way the nurse does. Where you're like, but don't hurt him, though. Even though he's murdering all of you, don't hurt him. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was well done. And another thing, too, that I really enjoyed as well was... Um, they, they referenced two other characters um, in this Spider-Verse that's going on. And that being uh, Rhino and black cat oh and when he uh, pretends he go he goes up to the guy and he's like i am venom or whatever yeah and scares the dude yeah that was funny too um they reference venom they cool. reference uh rhino and black cat because if you were w reading the scene where he's reading the newspaper that's talking about him the top headline was literally like rhino on the loose and then it's like is it from the zoo or is it a hoax and then black cat a uh, famous burglar which whatever they're going to do with the Sinister Six movie that is rumored to be in development, I hope we get to mm -hmm. see Rhino team up with these guys or whatever happens because I want, I really want to get into this after credit scene. The after credit scene okay. was so hype. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. You can talk about it. My opinion was, ah, yes, Vulture, I know him. And he was being nice to Morbius. And I was like, okay, this is cool i guess i don't know i guess everyone else is a lot bigger on vulture than i am so you can be hype i thought it was a good after credit scene but it didn't do much for me well i would say my main thing is that um the guy uh who portrays vulture that is um what's his name uh i'm running a blank here uh michael keaton michael keaton mm -hmm. right I think he plays one of the best vultures I've seen from a lot of movies and everything like that. And the fact okay. that they show specifically Michael Keaton's vulture from the Tom Holland universe in the after credit scene is such a very interesting take. Because if you remember, um, the spell that Doctor Strange cast sent everyone who is not from that universe back to their original who knows of Peter Parker. Right. Right. Does that mean that Vulture in Tom Holland's universe is not from that universe at all? Okay. I I like that you've said that now because I've never thought of that. That was the first thing that came to my mind because I'm like, wait. Because Vulture was MJ's dad, if I'm correct. Yeah, he was. Or stepdad. I, it's been a while since he's homecoming. At the very least, yeah. So, does that mean MJ is technically by universal how did vulture get into tom holland's universe yeah <laughs> what is happening <laughs> um so that, that's that's a good point 
that was I never thought about that it. That was interesting. Also to point out as well was um people are rumoring that the the current universe that we're seeing is specifically the Andrew Garfield one. Okay. So people are assuming that Andrew Garfield uh Andrew Garfield's coming back to have a third Spider-Man movie because there was this big thing like after uh, No Way Home. Um, people loved Andrew Garfield's experience. Toby Ori had his third movie. Tom Holland had his third movie and is a rumor to con- sign a contract to have three more movies give Andrew his third. The best send-off I feel like that they could do for uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is have Michael Keaton's Vulture, Rhino, Craven the Hunter, El Muerto, Madam Web, and Morbius. Those six be the Sinister Six that's going to be set up to be. And then you have Venom and Tom, uh, it's not, not Tom on, uh, Andrew Garfield Spider Man face off against the Sinister Six. Yeah, the that'd be interesting, but also I don't see why Morbius would be a villain when his whole movie was about him being good. And I think but, that's where it comes into play with Vulture, kind of like converting him to the dark side. You know what I mean? Maybe, but it was also like Vulture ended up being a good guy at the end of his movie too, though. Kind of. He still went to prison. Right. He went to prison, but he was still like supposed to be good. So it'd be interesting if there was even more Spider-Man villains that were to come out. And it's like, oh, we got Spider-Man morbius and venom on the same side true true yeah i could see that because they because carnage carnage is defeated um the i forget the name of the the first one in the first movie but that guy got easily defeated so i didn't watch it uh no i'm just i'm just thinking out loud for this so the only thing i think of is that they somehow bring back the uh carnage symbiote um and then, th- or you know, they pull from the huge list of Spider-Man villains and just be like this guy. Which I think that's what they're trying to do with uh, Craven and El Muerto. Uh, Madam Web has been in a couple, from what I've heard. Like she's been referenced several times, but never really done anything with. Craven's an interesting one because he's like one of Spider-Man's biggest villains. Um, and El Muerto is just a luchador. <laughs> he's literally just a luchador, and I love him. That's great. Um, that yeah, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, with all that being said, I'm I'm ready to give my final thoughts and my conclu- my uh, conclusive results. If you are my friend, yeah, same. Uh, I don't have a lot to close off on, so I do you mind if I go? Yeah, first? go right ahead. All right. Um, honestly, like I was saying, the thing that really carried this was the characters. Um, the even though it's predictable. Uh, they were very likable, the main villain and the hero. And all of the action was just so fun to be a part of. Uh, and it just made me have a great time the whole time. So I want to keep my rating and give this movie like a 7. It was really good for me. Um, for me, honestly, the movie is... It made me have a fun time. Uh, that's the best thing I always hope for any kind of comic book movie. It made me feel like a little kid again watching it because yeah, watching Morbius be a character that I'd never heard of before, never seen of before, well, heard of, but never really looked into, and seeing how they portrayed him and seeing all the references and just seeing this bigger picture that Sony's trying to work around, It, despite the little things about the story being meh, the characters were so good and so well done, and everything was awesome and fun. And I give it a 7 out of 10, honestly. Hell yeah, that's what I'm the talking about. People who shit on this movie were either being way overly critical, or they were just people who already don't like Venom. And I could see it being like, if it was people who read the Morbius comics and were like, this yeah. doesn't match it at all, I could understand that gripe. But this movie on its own was a lot of fun the the reason why i give this a seven out of ten not a six out of ten because the the fun the fun aspect of the movie and the enjoyment i got out of it bumped up to six that seven came from the fact that it made me want to buy his comic books it made me want to read about him yeah and if a comic book movie can urge you to get a comic book that that's a good comic book movie in my heart like i feel like stanley would be so proud to see that 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Stanley. So I feel like th this movie did Morbius justice. From what I saw, it did the whole series justice, and I'm excited to see what's to come. Agreed. Agreed. I hope they make more good stuff. Give me more Jared Leto. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. Give me um, more. Morbing. Uh, it's morbid I'm morbing. Time. Oh yeah, actually no, <laughs> correction. He never said it's morbing time once throughout the entire movie. Zero out of ten. <laughs> Absolute garbage. <laughs> if he says it's morbid time, I instant class. Mighty like, morbid power movie. bats. Mighty morbid oh, power shit. vampires. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think we already figured out ahead of time what we were going to watch next so we don't talk about it for 30 extra minutes uh, right? I'm, not, I'm not sure on it though i'm really not no okay <laughs> what what did i suggest i don't remember. it, it was mega mind we were going to be watching mega mind oh oh yeah because i've okay i've never seen mega mind <laughs> it's all <laughs> over the internet there's so many memes about all of it everyone loves this movie i love this movie and i somehow have not had it spoiled for me. You were lucky. I've not. I've never seen this movie, and I really want to. But I'm okay if you want to pick something. No, no, else. no. I really want to see Mega Mind, and I want to hear your thoughts of it because this movie is like okay. an easy nine out of ten for me. I'm so excited. Okay, I really want to see there, this movie. There, I've needed a reason. There's one clip that's been blowing up, and that was because the Queen of England passed away, and it was the uh, mm. "There is no Santa Claus, there is no Easter Bunny, and there's no Queen of England," and like the whole the whole internet used that clip everywhere when the Queen died. Oh, and I lost queen. it. Not the poor Queen. She killed Diana. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Uh, but yes, it's uh, please anyway. join us for our Mega Mind review because I'm excited to review this movie. It's been a while since I've seen it. I think I still have the Blu-ray of it in my room. I'm excited. I'm gonna go crazy when I have to edit this because after I've watched this movie, I'm gonna want to do nothing but throw in all of the memes in between what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> it's gonna be so awful and wonderful. All right, everyone. Well, we appreciate you listening in on us, and we appreciate you uh, hopefully agreeing with us on the topic, Morbius. Let us know what your thoughts are down in the comments, and we'll see you later. Please do. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>